Well, good morning. This is Plant Smart Living with Farmer Fred. Really glad you could join me today out here in the vegetable garden. It's a beautiful day here in Pennsylvania, Zone 6. It's going to be in the 60s today, and you know, this warm weather is just really making these plants really start to, to grow, you know, so it's an exciting time of the year to be out in the garden. Well, anyhow, today I wanted to share with you how you can grow more food on your postage stamp size property. So thanks for joining me today out here in the vegetable garden. I hope this aerial view of my garden gives you some ideas for your garden. So many of you may live in the city like New York or Philadelphia, which is only about a half hour drive from where I live, or maybe you own a, a townhouse and you know, you just have a small property, you know, it's kind of self-contained and you want to grow more vegetables. You know, you may have a few raised beds but you can't expand the footprint of your property. So what can you do if you want to expand your footprint of your garden? Well, you can grow vertically, you know, and, and gain a lot of extra space. And that's what I've done here with my garden here at Plant Smart Living. I have a lot of trellises that I grow food up vertically and you can just expand your vegetable growing, you know, almost twofold if you spend a little bit of time and money in your garden and grow and build some trellises. So what are some of the types of vegetables you could grow up your trellis? Well certainly your cucumbers if you get a have a vining cucumber that's going to continually grow you know cucumbers are, are great to grow up a, a trellis. You could also grow some of your wall ham butternut squash or acorn squash some people even have grown melons up up your trellises or arbors. You know, some of these vegetables you may have to support, you know, because of the weight of them. If you grow sweet potatoes in your garden, you could also grow your sweet, sweet potato vine up the trellis. I grow sweet potatoes in my garden here and they just really spread out. But if you provide some sort of vertical trellis, you can grow sweet potatoes and just let that vine just grow right up the vine. And so, you know, and I also grow my sun gold cherry tomatoes, one of my favorite tomatoes in my garden. In fact, this trellis right here behind me, I grew two sun gold cherry tomatoes up at last year. So it went up and, and over. And those sun gold cherry tomatoes or any type of vining t tomatoes, actually they are the indeterminate type variety which means they'll grow anywhere from 6 to 12 feet. Your other variety of tomato is your determinate or your bush type, which only get it somewhere around 36 to 42 inches high. Uh, this year I'm, we're just growing up our, our clematis up this trellis. It was nice having the tomatoes grow up this arbor last year, but it got to be messy with the tomatoes falling off the vine and everything, so I opted to just uh, continually grow them in our back garden there but anyhow what I thought I would do is just take you around my garden and show you some of the the trellises and arbors that I have built over the years that have really expanded my garden by growing vertically so follow me along So along my outdoor garden structure here, I grow my Malabar spinach, or climbing spinach. Right now I have some seeds direct sown in the soil here, but this trellis here, it's very simple, simply made. It's made out of chicken wire, and I just have like a one by four frame around the perimeter, and it's probably two feet wide by about eight feet high. And so it's just a simple trellis. It, 
I'm going to be growing my Malabar spinach up and it's going to grow up this and then continue up to the top of my my arbor there and so it's just a simple a trellis you could build for your garden. Let's take a closer look. So let's go over to the other end of my garden and I'll show you my other arbor that I have. And so I just love having arbors or trellises in my garden and there's just something about walking under or through a trellis. I also have my chimes hanging here on this trellis. I'm just going to take them down so they don't make too much noise. It's a little windy here. But anyhow, this I just made this out of simple 2 by 3 construction and, and these the trellis on the side here is like a, a three quarter inch by one inch piece of wood that I that I fabricated to to build this uh, little fence that they could grow up. And then uh, this is like a 40 degree angle. I also stain these with like a Swiss mocha, a brown stain, so so it kind of matches the woods. But you know this would make a nice weekend project or or even a one day project it's not really something that that difficult to do but what I have growing up here is I have two of my sun gold cherry tomatoes last year I grew my sweet million tomatoes up this trellis it's the first time I grew them because I like experimenting with different vegetables out in the garden and I did a, a, a compar taste comparison from the between the sweet million and the Sun Gold Cherry Tomato. I did a video on that and uh, although the Sweet Million tasted nice and sweet, the Sun Gold Cherry Tomato just really knocked it out of the park because the Sweet Million just tasted like any other type of ripe red tomato. But that Sun Gold Cherry Tomato is just something that's really tasty about those. But anyhow, I have two of those plants growing up this one. And so you could you could even grow something up the other side, but right here I just have two of these tomato plants growing. So let's take a closer look at this trellis here. So you can see at the base here I have two of my sun gold cherry tomatoes that I use jute twine to tie them to the trellis. I also let my Sun gold cherry tomatoes or any vining tomato like that, a cherry tomato, I just let them do their thing. I don't do any pruning on them. But you can see it's just real simple construction. So why don't you follow me along down this row here and I'll show you an arch trellis that I made out of a cattle panel. So follow me along. So this here is a cattle panel trellis. I ended up buying it from Tractor Supply. They're $22, maybe a little bit more at this point, but I ended up doing a video on how you could install one of these for under $45. It's a very informative step-by-step -step video. But anyhow, these things are, are just excellent to have in the garden for growing your food up. You know, you can save a lot of space in your garden. Uh, again, I have two of my sun gold cherry tomatoes that are just going to grow up here, up and over these. And what's nice is that you can just walk under and also pick the uh, tomatoes from these but again you can grow all kinds of vegetables up these 
and just gain a lot of extra growing space in your garden. And so let's take a closer look at this trellis. So I have two uh, fence T-posts at each end to anchor it down to the ground. Now I ended up painting this trellis with some uh, brown rust-oleum paint to give it allow it to blend into the woods a little bit more. And then if we just swing over here or pan over, I also have another trellis right there, another arbor that I made out of one of these cattle panels. If you have fencing in your backyard too, obviously you can grow you know, beans and all types of vegetables up your fence. If, if you have a solid wood fence, you could also attach grow bags or planters to your fence. I've seen people attach rain gutters to their fence to, to grow lettuce in. And so there's all kinds of ways you can be creative with gaining more space out in your garden. But I just love using these cattle panel trellises. Once you you know, spend your, the money on them, you know, you're, you're going to have them almost forever. They just last a, a really long time. But anyhow, I just hope this video was able to give you some ideas on how you can grow more food on your postage stamp size property. And if you have any questions or comments about this video, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. You can also visit us at PlantSmartLiving.com and there you can learn more about gardening and also how you can reclaim your health by adopting a whole food, plant-based, vegan lifestyle. Well, anyhow, I hope you have a wonderful day today and a bountiful garden season. So until next time, this is Plant Smart Living with Farmer Fred.